Yet again, on behalf of ICS, I welcome you to this webinar. NHS Society is committed to providing an in-depth understanding with take-home messages at the end of every webinar. We are doing a series of webinars every fortnight. NHS Society presents this webinar to you on air pollution and its effect on respiratory health. Today's webinar is supported by Glenmark. Before starting the webinar, I would like to inform all our members and viewers that NAPCON Delhi registrations 2023 are now live. Uh, get yourself registered in the early bird registration. Now, I would like to welcome our moderator, our very own Dr. Sandeep Salvi. He is the Director of Palmukhe Research and Education Foundation, Pune, India. Sir, I request you to go ahead and begin this session. Over to you. Air pollution and health gives me immense pleasure to uh, share this uh, dais with two very eminent speakers, Dr. Khilnani and Dr. P. M. Mahesh, whom I will introduce uh, when the, before, that, before the presentation starts. But before uh, I really invite both Dr. Khilnani and Dr. Mahesh to share their knowledge and their experience in this very important field of respiratory medicine, I thought I would just set the context rolling for why we are doing this program today. Life starts with the first breath and ends with the last breath. Isn't it fascinating that life is a period defined between your first breath that you take when you're born and the last breath that you leave before you pass away. So life is equated to breathing and that's how important it is. We breathe around 6 million times in a year and the whole purpose of breathing is to nourish the body with oxygen. Have you ever imagined or thought about what is pure air? You know, we talk about pure water. We talk about uh, clean, hygienic food. But uh, we rarely give some value or importance to what is pure air. So pure air is a combination of all these different elements that I've put in this uh, table over here that tells you the most important component of the pure air is the oxygen that uh, is so very vital for our survival. However, the air that we breathe today is unfortunately or sadly mixed with a lot of pollutants that are largely generated by human inhabitation on this planet. And these various pollutants include the gaseous ones as well as the particulate matter ones. And together, they contribute uh, they constitute what we call as air pollutants, which have now started becoming a very important reason for poor uh, human health across the planet. The air, as I said, contains oxygen, which uh, we need about 1,000 liters of pure oxygen on a daily basis. It varies from 500 to 1,500 liters. And for this, we need to breathe about 10,000 liters of air on a daily basis. What is most important is this oxygen that we breathe through the air uh, generates 90% of the body's energy with only 10% coming from the food that we eat and the water that we drink. Unfortunately and very sadly, uh, India is considered to be one of the most polluted countries in the world. 95% uh, or even more people who live in India do so in areas that have air pollution levels above the safety limits recommended by the World Health Organization. And you can see that uh, it's mainly the northern parts of India that have very high levels of air pollution. It is also important to appreciate as doctors that air pollution kills three times more people than who die because of HIV AIDS, tuberculosis or malaria, all put together. And we can see in this graph below that, that uh, India is the country that has the highest amount of air pollution. We are the world leaders in that, followed by China, then Pakistan, then Nigeria and so on. So clearly, I think uh, air pollution is something that has now become a very serious issue in our country. We all have seen these images in the news uh, yesterday and today that talk about these flash floods that have happened in uh, the state of Himachal Pradesh and the havoc that it has created. The same floods have uh, been described last couple of days in Delhi, 
we remember the 2017 Mumbai flood, floods, which were a complete disaster. A lot of people died. And then there are so many areas across the country where uh, drought is becoming more common. So the climate change that is accompanied with the rising levels of air pollution has created a lot of havoc on human health. We actually breathe climate change. So the moment the, 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 the climate starts changing, uh, we, we tend to breathe that. And uh, uh, the, the pollutants that largely come from outdoor sources and indoor sources are responsible for ill health in a very large population. Very interestingly, a survey was conducted amongst members of the American Thoracic Society to, uh, to get an insight into the level of knowledge that they have about uh, uh, air pollution, climate change, and respiratory health. And these were all pulmonologists. And you can see in this paper that was uh, recently published in CHEST, 31% uh, of the physicians had moderate knowledge, 44% had modest, 18% had completely no knowledge at all about the association between climate change, air pollution, and respiratory health. And in the box uh, to the right of that uh, are the various respiratory disorders that are associated with uh, climate change and increasing levels of air pollution. So it's just not asthma, COPD that we tend to associate air pollution with, but there's a whole host of different respiratory disorders that are associated with uh, air pollution. Now, as doctors, it is not only important for us to be aware about this knowledge, but to apply this knowledge in clinical practice and more so in helping mitigate the adverse impacts of air pollution on health. There are so many different ways in which a doctor can actually support uh, physicians, uh, patients who visit them uh, to uh, minimize the impact of air pollution on uh, human health. And this is a paper that we published a couple of years ago in the European Respiratory Journal. And uh, as doctors, uh, you can see the, the mitigation strategies both for uh, household air pollution related uh, effects as well as ambient air pollution related effects. So there is emerging knowledge to tell us what can we do for our patients. Uh, just not having, uh, just not merely having knowledge about the association, it is also important for us to do something about it as doctors. Other than this, I think doctors are also responsible for spreading awareness about the impact of air pollution on health among the community. And this uh, Doctors for Clean Air and Climate Action, uh, which is a non-governmental organization based in Delhi, is, uh, is, is, is made up of various groups of doctors uh, from across the country who very passionately have taken up this initiative of uh, educating the lay people about the harmful effects of air pollution, what patients need to do. And as the responsible citizens of the country, what we need to do in order to ensure that we start breathing uh, good quality air. Indian Chess Society supports uh, organizations like these because these are purely dedicated for improving the health of our uh, fellow people. So with this very brief uh, introduction, I would like to invite our first speaker for today, uh, Dr. G.C. Khilnani, who clearly requires no introduction uh, in this field of uh, respiratory medicine. Dr. Kinnani uh, has been the professor and head of respiratory medicine at the Orland Institute of Medical Sciences. Uh, he is now the consulting physician at one of the private hospitals in Delhi. Uh, Vice President of the Indian Chess Society, a very, very active uh, academic. And you can see uh, his uh, very knowledgeable posts that he does on a very regular basis for all the members of the Indian Chess Society. Uh, he's been instrumental in uh, creating awareness and uh, educating doctors about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, how doctors need to be educated, what they need to do in order to improve the quality of care of their patients, and so on. Dr. Kilnani has also immense experience uh, in this field of air pollution and health. He's done some original and very crucial research on air pollution, especially ambient air pollution and its impact on health. And we are very fortunate to have him to do the opening talk for today's webinar. And I am extremely privileged uh, to welcome Dr. Kilnani to share his thoughts and his experience on uh, ambient air pollution and its impact on human health. Dr. Kilnani, all yours, please. Yeah. 
so uh, i hope i am audible yes dr kilnani you are audible <clears throat> so uh, thank you sandeep uh, sorry i am calling by first name and uh, dr sandeep salvi for generous introduction and thank you indian chess society for giving me this opportunity to be before you and present uh, ambient air pollution and its impact on health and nobody is better than dr sandeep salvi to emphasize the value of clean air value of air pollution my job is to present before you the evidence and what what is the impact of air pollution how does it affect us what are the causes what can we do how to do a personal protection and what is our future are we are we doomed with menace and that's what uh, so talking about the burden of chronic respiratory disease before 1950s chess physicians were dr kilnani you can see your slides have you uploaded have you put them yeah i have shared them oh, wait wait a minute yes. uh, no dr kilnani we we cannot see the slides okay just a second can you can you please I'll... check sorry i don't know what's wrong just a So while Dr. Kilnani uploads his slides, so, so uh, you have to give me power, you know, this thing to share. I'm uh, unable to share. Take second, just the thing. Ah, uh, we can see. We can. We can. Well, at least we can see some screen, Dr. Kilnani. Okay, just the thing. Now we can see that you're uploading your slides, and yeah, well, sorry yes. about that. Yeah, no so, problem. Uh, but I was audible before when I was talking. Yes, yes, you were audible, Dr. Kilnani. Uh, yes like the visible so with for your presentation yeah okay all right so so i'll start and start my presentation thanking dr salvi for the generous introduction and i'll be discussing in next 25 minutes granted to me about ambient air pollution and its impact on our health uh, it was actually shocking to see that even chess physicians are not so aware of uh, the adverse effects and that if the chess physician who are logged on today have get get some idea about how air pollution affects our health i'll be focusing more on respiratory health but touching upon other organs also so chess physicians were considered as tb physician before 1950 then came asthma copd pneumonia bronchitis and now came you know sleep apnea ild pulmonary hypertension critical care and several challenging respiratory diseases and covid time we saw further importance of this uh, specialty where the world realized that uh, respiratory medicine or a pulmonologist you know has a great role to play but These diseases of COPD, asthma, and tuberculosis, and lung cancer, and post-COVID lung disease. This is the most uh, important burden of respiratory diseases that we see. And we all know that there is alarming rise of respiratory disease, especially in developing countries, as uh, Dr. Sandeep has pointed out. That 95 percent of India is breathing polluted air, and COPD is going to be, or it is actually a second leading cause of death. lung cancer is number one cancer killer very shocking actually the number of asthma cases are not decreasing they are not uh, they should decrease but it's a genetic disease and pneumonia is the sixth leading cause of death all over the world what is disturbing is that india has 18% of the population whereas 32% of the delhis that is disability adjusted life year which is a sum of uh, uh, life loss due to death and the disability which occurs in terms of year the total is called uh, uh, delhi so we have 18% of population whereas 32% of delhi is are uh, because of the respiratory diseases and as many as 8.7% of total deaths in india occur due to copd and prevalence of copd increased from 20 by 29% from 19, 1999 to 
what is the reason for that and he always thought that tobacco smoking was related to copd which is still true in the in western world 90% of patients with copd would be smokers and it's shocking to know that 50% of the copd patients in india are caused by air pollution 25% are because of smoking and others like mainly occupational mining industries power plants etc 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 what is important is that all are preventable a major cause of morbidity and mortality in our society is preventable provided we take uh, action if i talk about the world only 10% of the world population is breathing air which is who certified i'll come to it later now talking about the air pollution and i would like to recite this phrase by drodrick nature's condition rightly interpreted reveals a society's culture and traditions as directly as does a novel or a newspaper or a code of law it is so truly said about air pollution and i would decide a case of november 10 2019 that is the diwali time in delhi one dermatologist colleague of mine who was uh, 53 years old never had any asthma or respiratory illness he came to my opd at about 10 o'clock saying dot kilani i got up in the morning and at 4 o'clock i was choking my mouth was dry i was unable to breathe i sat down i drank water i opened the windows and i didn't realize what was happening and i was coughing and what was happening on that particular day that aqi was 999 and more because these machines don't measure uh more than 999 and it was in the hazardous thing with the result that daily newspaper the full daily pollution death up by 100% and so on and so forth and delhi has a distinction of world's most polluted city why we this mess that's what we are going to talk about it and this is provided by our friend uh, professor arvind kumar uh, who operates on lung day in and day out this is a himachal lung on a operating table which is a pink lung and this is a daily lung which is absolutely charred now he is this patient is a non smoker and no amount of inhaler or antibiotics or any kind of therapy can bring this lung to this stage so this is what this is what the mess is for us and if you see the india gate before diwali and this is after diwali and the next day you see that you can't even see the india gate but what we would like we would like india gate to be like this now this india gate is at the time when there was a lockdown there were no vehicles on the road there were no industries working you can see the blue sky and clear india gate and that's what we would like our air to be how can we achieve that that's a question so going into the history where the, when did we come to know that air pollution is a problem this was famous great london smog in 1952 when they realized that as many as there were 12000 excess deaths they were not deaths excess deaths over a period and when they actually uh, investigated it this was because of the smog smog is a uh, is a combination of uh, air pollution and fog that is what is called smog so th- that's how the hist- story of air pollution came into current and subsequently when the so unfortunate incident the world center uh, uh, 9/11 occurred there was a dense cloud and over a period of time 60 to 70000 people responded were over exposed there were upper respiratory tract infection there were lower respiratory tract infection there was asthma there was reactive airway disease eosinophilic pneumonia interstitial lung disease even granular matter lymphadenitis sarcoidosis and bronchiolitis obliterans so so many diseases were caused by this uh 911 incidents which actually changed the world 
and also the understanding of how our pollution affects us so the pollution affects us in two ways that is in acute ways that are that because, that you see du during this uh, world trade center disaster and other thing is the common that is uh, copd so what is air pollution the air pollution is a contamination of air by noxious gases and minute particles of solid and liquid matter in concentration that endanger health and what is a pollutant pollutant is a any solid or liquid gaseous substance present in the atmosphere in such a concentration as may be or tend to be injurious to human being or other living creatures or plants or property or environment so what are the sources the sources of air pollution are traffic this is not a unusual thing you know yesterday we had a, a sort of a floods like situation in india and people took hours to reach home because this is a normal situation there are industries and there are uh, transportation fuel consumption industry and miscellaneous and in delhi we also see periodically this crop burning besides this uncontrolled unorganized construction of work also adds to their pollution this brick clean industry you know this person is standing with a mask on but i don't think he will be protected protected we will we'll talk about it later indoor oil air pollution uh, colleague dr mahesh will be talking about and it in fact dr sandeep has done amazing research of documenting uh, pm 10 or 30000 microgram uh, per liter in the indoor uh, when the windows are closed and the lady is cooking under the fire so there are six most most common pollutants the particulate matter i'll come to it later is uh, the more important nitrogen dioxide carbon monoxide ozone sulfur dioxide lead problem is almost sorted out with the you know lead free uh, uh, fuel that we are getting so what is particulate matter we all keep listening pm 2.5 200 300 pm 10 initially pm 10 was only measured two decades ago so some of the studies that we conducted said only pm 10 so this is all pm are not one all particulate matters are not one this is a complex mixture of extremely small particles and liquid droplets made up of a number of compounds including acids such as nitrates and sulfates organic chemicals metals and soil or dust particles includes aerosol smoke fumes dust ash and pollen so when we say pm 2.5 in a coal mine would have a different uh, impact in a construction industry will a different effect pm 2.5 which is coming from a uh, vehicle diesel will be different from the kerosene would be different and so on and so forth to understand why we talk about pm 2.5 or pm 10 this uh, slide is very important to understand the particles which are more than 10 to 15 micron uh, are not of interest to us because they are actually stopped from entering our respiratory tract by the nasal uh, filters so the, so therefore uh, what is interesting is pm particle which are less than 10 micron that is called pm 10 these are silica aluminum iron deposit in the tracheobronchial tree they don't reach the lower part of the respiratory tract what is important is pm 2.5 these are the most toxic agents they reach the lowest part of the airways and get deposited there and that is why today we the pm 2.5 is considered the most important but there is something more which we, we are not able to measure routinely is the ultra fine particulate matter that is particle of size of less than 0.1 micron these are the one who actually penetrate the alveolus alveoli and go into the blood stream and remain in the blood stream and with each brain kidney heart intestine and everywhere and are responsible for several effects like atherosclerosis or and of course the gases like carbon monoxide will pass through unhindered uh, 
in the respiratory system. Unfortunately, uh, in the developed world, the air pollution uh, is coming down. Even in some underdeveloped country, the air pollution is coming down. But in India, the air pollution after after 2010, you can see, is going up. Even countries like Bangladesh and some other countries are in China are bet doing better than us. So we need to wake up with this and so that uh, we lead a healthier life. So coming to that, what are the health effects of air pollution? And now I might actually scare you a lot by giving you some data. The health effects of air pollution are the acute effects are in the form of discomfort such as irritation in the nose, throat, eyes or skin or headache, dizziness and nausea. The respiratory effects are in the form of exacerbation of asthma and COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lower respiratory tract infection, lung cancer, ischemic heart disease and cerebrovascular disease. And uh, it doesn't stop there. As I said, there are ultrafine particulate and gases which uh, go into the blood. They cause nerve damage. They cause uh, uh, there are volatile organic compounds. There is the ozone gas, and all these things will cause headache, fatigue, and uh, CAD. So, if you see the pyramids of this air pollution, it causes death in a very small number of patient, but initially it causes lung function decrement. Now, there are several studies done, one done by Dr. Pandey also, almost three decades back, when the lung function was measured in Delhi children and also in Tirupati children, school children of similar socioeconomic status. It was distinctly found that Delhi children have a poorer lung function as compared to the Tirupati and several other studies have been done. So large proportion are affected by in the form of the uh, inflammation, decrement in lung function and cardiac effects. Lesser are affected with respiratory symptoms like an asthma attacks. There are more doctor visits, school absence, lost work, ER visits and I'll come to it later and death also. So one should not go only by death. We should actually focus on this. That our quality of life and the quantity of life both are affected in between. There is no organ in the body is there which is uh, not affected. Now this is a paper uh, which uh, I was invited to contribute to the current opinion pulmonary medicine which uh, titled Air Pollution India and Related Adverse Respiratory Effects Past, Present and Future and me along with my colleague Dr. Pawan Tiwari uh, contributed this and this had an accompanying editorial also which said that air pollution in India is the lead article in the issue of uh, COPM followed by broad range and Kilnani and Tiwari take an unblinking view of the causes of air pollution in India. This is a paper which we actually enjoyed writing, reviewing the all. The salient features were that ambient air pollution attributable deaths are 1.0, that is more than 10 lakhs, and this is 2015. And household air pollution is also similar, this is 2010. And uh, there has been 24% increase in ambient air pollution attributable deaths in last 10 years. There are nearly 6,000 premature deaths per day and ARP attributable mortality is 27.5% that is 27 uh, with lower respiratory tract infection and COPD. And household air pollution also causes lung cancer and that is why we are saying lung cancer in non-tobacco uh, smokers also. So summarizing the Indian data that Lawrence et al. showed that there is premature death in 2012, there is increased respiratory cause of mortality, there is increased exacerbation of COPD and LRTI, that is the barium and tobolic et al. There is increased health expenditure, that is quite understandable. But the health effects of air pollution, the history is, is was 
sort of started with my mentor dr jayan pande uh, who conducted in study in the late 90s and uh, what we did that for one year we correlated emergency visits of copd asthma and heart attacks with the with the level of air pollution and it was found out that emergency room visits of asthma copd and acute coronary event increased by 21 24 and 24% respectively this was a study which stimulated honorable court to bring in cng and also uh, uh, drive away the small scale industry outside 50 km outside delhi with that delhi air quality improved significantly but subsequently the diesel came and it became worse there was another study conducted by dr uma from terry which actually showed that each increase in the pm10 by 10 microgram leads to 0.11% increase in daily mortality and this was actually glaring this was a retrospective analysis which we published uh, some time back now the adverse health effects don't stop at a living person but it also affects the fetus in the womb it affects infant and children adversely as daily children today if i could talk about my experience 30 years back we we didn't imagine that person would have a nebulization machine at home if one has to actually think, talk about it please buy a procure a nebulization machine today anybody who has children at home majority of them if you ask them do you have a machine nebulizer yes yes we have a machine we use it uh, for our children so infant and children are affected pregnant women are affected there is a incidence of uh, uh, iugr also elderly are affected and children who are born to uh, mothers who, in, who are exposed to the large amount of air pollution the the baby's health also the respiratory health is adversely affected now this does not uh, restrict copd or asthma or uh, lung cancer even the tuberculosis which is a which is a, another main uh, which respiratory medicine is it a contributor so this was a study uh, which was done in korea which the conclusion was that there is increased risk of infection including tb and the air pollution it was discerned contributes to that now previously when i started my career in respiratory medicine majority of cases with lung cancer were tobacco smokers except a few who had adenocarcinoma but now there is a data from india also that more and more cases of lung cancer in seen in non smoker also and why it is this because the their pollution combustion of wood coal and kerosene and diesel contains for poly aromatic hydrocarbon and there is sufficient evidence in animals that it causes lung cancer benzene arsenic acid nickel also Uh, seem to be causing lung cancer. There is sufficient evidence, and acetaldehyde and formaldehyde is also causes. Uh, so there is sufficient evidence that lung cancer is caused by. Uh, so now, is there a role of severity of COVID and air pollution? We all suffered this pandemic, and we were during COVID time. We were conducting webinars almost every. every week you know talking about everything but what we realize that that pollution impairs the first line of defense of upper airways and namely cilia and possibly uh, and that actually leads to not only increased incident but the severity of infection even in 2003 sars 84% uh, more likely to die in area of air pollution same we saw in northern italy also i will quickly go through it as my time is coming up and there was a 1 microgram increase in pm 2.5 was associated with 8% increase in covid 19 mortality another 
evidence was there from germany and the other part of europe when they correlated the mortality with the level of nitric oxide the 83% of all fatalities occurred in region with no2 above 100 and uh, 1.5% of all fatalities occurred in regions where the no2 was below 50 that's a direct direct correlation uh, of air pollution with covid mortality so so came the in 2012 the air quality index that you keep reading the aqi is 300 the aqi is 200 today the aqi is good i can go for a walk so this aqi was uh, 2014 government of india constituted a committee under uh, chairmanship of uh, Uh, Dr. Sharma from IIT Delhi, and I was part of that. And this is based on air pollutants. It is calculated, and this is a real time which comes on your television or whatever screen. And why it is important? But there is significant correlation of uh, AQI with mortality and also morbidity. And these are the parameters that you know. And uh, whenever it is hazardous it is advisable not to go out you know uh, for walk or whatever i'll come to it now minimizing the air pollution is everybody's uh, duty administrator politician what doctors can do is sensitize the administrators to make policy like the one study by dr pandey led to sea change of air quality in india it led to in delhi the crackers are banned completely and now on diwali we don't see any crackers similarly such policies are required but at a personal level how do you minimize the exposure to protect yourself in the event of uh, bad air quality so are the air purifier useful are the face mask useful are the nasal filters useful i'll be finishing another 3 4 minutes not sandeep so there are types there are two types of air purifiers one that only filters are there and every air purifier has two parts one is a filter and another is a adsorbent adsorbent is the one which absorbs the gases soluble gases so how to use air purifier that one that air purifier should be on all the time that you are inside place the purifier in the room where you spend most time leave, leave your air purifier in the same room keep the doors and window closed that's very important and the point of flow should be towards you and avoid ionic air cleaners and periodically clean the filters now there is a there some hazard also of air purifier the ozone production which itself is a pollutant but although the health benefit has not been documented but the common sense says that if the pm 2.5 goes down or the air quality improves so my personal take is that it is it should be recommended for people who have respiratory disease especially in the time of uh, uh, high air pollution there was a small study was conducted in delhi which said that although the most affordable air purifier currently available are associated with significant improvement in indoor air pollution they are not a replacement for public action regions like delhi now these are the kind of air purifier which are available so uh, the face mask who always i am uh, one of the members of their uh, uh, global health program they don't recommend the they call it respirator they don't advise face mask or any kind of mask which will protect us from air pollution but i did contest with them that you are talking about pm 2.5 of 25 and 50 and we are talking about 200 so mask should be of some use but it should be understood the simple cloth mask which you were uh, promoting during the time of covid has no value in protecting from uh, air pollution n95 or kn95 may be may be of some uh, value in uh, protecting us protecting us from air pollution but nobody should think that if you are wearing a mask you are completely protected from adverse effects of air pollution so therefore uh, 
finally should we go for a morning walk in the polluted when the pollution rate is high that's a big question asked to us and during when we do for exercise our mouth opens our tidal volume increases our minute volume increases so therefore the more air quantum of air goes inside and the, there is a evidence from the uk study when the people were made to walk, walk on the hyde park and later on they were made to walk, walk in the oxford street walking on the oxford street reduced their fev1 and also uh, some cytokines were liberated i have no time to go into the detail that but suffice is the fact that walking when the aqi is hazardous or very poor does not give any benefit i always advise my uh, on television or whatever that early morning walking when there is a smog uh one should not go out for a walk it will cause more harm than the uh, than good so final slide is there have been several efforts to mitigate uh, the air preventive and control pollution act came in 1981 national air quality monitoring program started environment protection act a post bhopal tragedy was uh, enacted motor vehicle act came to limit the automobile emission supreme court verdict for cng adoption by public transport buses this came uh, after dr pandey study bharat emission norms have been there aqi was initiated and now the ujjwala yojana and india has signed the uh, paris accord also and there is a graded response action plan in delhi ncr to to control the air pollution and the you know uh, construction stops and there were so several things were tried or even it did not work so ladies and gentlemen i will conclude by saying that this brief presentation i have given an overview of what causes air pollution and uh, how we are affected how can we protect ourselves our future depends upon uh, the quality of air which uh, dr sandeep sahib emphasized if we doctors have a duty duty to educate our patients educate and the researchers like sandeep salvi is doing a great work in publishing and also emphasizing on the policy makers to improve our air quality by bringing out very stringent i, I was hearing dr mr gadkari the honorable minister for transport and he expects that by 2030 50% vehicles in india will be electric vehicles that's a similar lining to my mind but indoor poly air pollution is a big menace mahesh of mahesh will be talking with that i thank indian test society and of sandeep salvi for patient here thank you very much thank you <clears throat> thank you dr chilmani sir for an absolutely brilliant overview of uh, what is air pollution who are the people who are most vulnerable to it what are the impacts of air pollution on health and more importantly the mitigation strategies i think the last part of your presentation Uh, has some very useful and practical tips for doctors to apply that knowledge in their clinical practice so thank you dr kilmani we will come to uh, some questions at the uh, uh, after dr mahesh's presentation in the panel discussion it now gives me a great privilege to introduce and invite uh, professor p m mahesh uh, to deliver his talk on household air pollution uh, and its impact on uh, human health and uh, like dr kilnani dr mahesh does not require any introduction he is the professor and head of the department of uh, pulmonary medicine at the J jss medical college in mysuru uh, he is uh, ranked in the top 2% of the respiratory scientists in the world according to the latest stanford university ranking so very proud of dr mahesh uh, apart from being a very good uh, academic and a clinician uh he is a very good researcher is is a he is a quiet person quiet type but does some absolutely amazing research in the, this field of respiratory medicine and his original work in the field of household air pollution uh is also absolutely uh, brilliant so may i now invite uh, dr mahesh to tell us about the very the next very important topic on household air pollution and its impact on health dr mahesh all yours please yeah thank you sandeep for the kind introduction and uh, i hope you can see my slides 
Yes, we can. We can see your slides. We can hear you well, Mahesh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sandeep. And uh, thank you, Dr. Kilnani. That was a brilliant uh, talk. Now, I will spend some time to look at uh, you know, what are the various aspects of indoor air pollution. This is the beautiful Mysore Palace. In the rains, uh, it looks even more beautiful. So I will be looking at uh, what is indoor air quality, what are the common indoor pollutants, where can they come from, what are the possible health effects, what are the hidden pollutants in LMICs, where I will borrow heavily from Sandeep's work. And we'll discuss some of the studies that we have been doing for the last 17 years in the Mudra cohort from Mysore and how to maintain good indoor air quality. A good portion of it has already been covered by you know, Professor Kildani. So I will just rush through that last part. So the, when we talk of indoor air quality, it is part of a much larger indoor environmental quality. And when we talk of an indoor air quality, it is uh, just uh, you know one part of the whole indoor environmental quality and all of them have a significant bearing on promoting health and disease now when we talk of an indoor air quality people in the developed countries spend almost about 90% of their time indoors so the exposure to indoor air pollution cannot not only have negative impacts on the health productivity, but also health problems. Six to nine percent drop of the office work uh, performance as seen in some countries. In India, this was a very old study. The health burden in terms of sick days attributable to indoor air pollution was estimated to be 1.6 to 2 billion days in a year. So you can imagine the impact of the poor indoor air quality. Now this can lead to a lot of uh, symptoms and diseases. Some of these are non-specific. Some of these can really be problematic. Low birth weight, just like uh, you have heard, Professor Kilani, uh, the impact of the outdoor air pollution. These again uh, extends from womb to tomb. The low birth weight, perinatal mortality, asthma, COPD, otitis, tuberculosis, cancers, cardiovascular diseases. It spreads across the spectrum. They have found carbon particles in the brain. So I'm sure the cognition, we have done some studies that shows that people exposed to biomass particles, the cognition also is poor. Now, we have indoor air pollutants, whether the person is economically in the uh, higher uh, status or lower status. If you talk of the rich homes, you have paints, varnishes, plywood, particle boards, in a new house, at least up to six months, the concentrations are very high, up to six months. ACs, if they are poorly maintained, cosmetics, detergents, houses, mites, of course, if there are a lot of carpets and contents. In a poor homes, mainly it's the biomass fuel exposure. This has been our major focus over the last 17 years. Agricultural product storage, especially tobacco, is the worst of the lot. And of course, if they use kerosene stoves, they contribute as well. Now we have uh, several sources starting from the bathroom where we have fungi, rodors, and microbial pathogens. We have AC units. We have living room, which includes VOCs and uh, the carpets having dust mites. Outdoor air comes indoor. A lot of the times you find that the outdoor air pollution also contributes to the indoor air pollution. And once it comes indoors, it doesn't easily get out. And therefore, the indoor concentration is actually worse than the outdoor concentration. So starting from the kitchen to the laundry room to bedroom, they can be everywhere. I won't have time to go into the all the details of it, but sufficient to know that these are some of the key indoor air pollutants, like the environmental tobacco smoke, the carbon monoxide, the nitrogen oxides, organic chemicals, pesticides, formaldehydes. These are the main sources, including dry cleaning clothing, moth repellents, air fresheners, cleaning agents, Aerosol spray, solvents, glues, herbicides, lawn and garden products, plywoods and particle board. And of course, we all know uh, what are all the various diseases that can be caused by these indoor air pollutants. You have the inhaled particles, including asbestos are there. Radon mainly comes from the soil under the building, some of the earth desired construction materials, some of the groundwater. That's a very high risk of lung cancer. You need to have a radon certificate in the Western world when somebody wants to sell their house. 
biological organisms are also critical air pollutants. Lead comes from the paints. So there are a lot of uh, indoor air pollutants that we need to be careful of. Now the hidden pollutants, these mainly come from Sandeep Salvi's seminal work where he said the mosquito coil has a lot of harmful products. Most of them use it every night. They have forgotten the use of mosquito net. If at all it has to be used, he has shown that the window open, door open is the best way to go. If at all it has to be used, but preferably it should never be used. Same thing with the dupe and the, and the incense sticks. Dupes are extremely toxic. Almost you can see the PM10, PM2.5 that comes. It's like about 1000 cigarettes. And uh, they are also very, very important hidden pollutant that people don't know. They think they are being religious. Uh, again, this is uh, from the Sandeep Salvi's paper. If you look at the number of people exposed uh, to the indoor air pollution with the solid fuel uses, they are about 3 billion compared to about 1 billion uh, cigarette smokers. This is again that looks at the, uh, uh, the burden of the chronic respiratory diseases. You'll find that the household air pollution, both in men and women, is right there among with smoking and the ambient air pollution in causing COPD. Now, especially the NO2, the TRAP, the PAH, these are critical. And uh, the TRAP is known to cause the cough, bronchospasm, and lung inflammation, especially neutrophilic inflammation. The spectrum of health effects of indoor air pollution extends from an impaired lung function, so very similar to the outdoor air pollution that Professor Kilani has shown you, to restricted activity, absenteeism to work and school, need for more medication use, to premature mortality. I will quickly go through some of the studies and the work that we have been doing over the last 17 years. This is one of few respiratory, rural respiratory cohorts in Asia with a follow up of more than 15 years. We wanted to have a long standing cohort to look at COPD in rural men and women. We want to find out what is the minimum threshold of biomass exposure that increases the risk of respiratory disease. We all know about minimum 10 pack years needed to cause a respiratory disease uh, for in uh, tobacco smokers. But what is the minimum threshold for biomass exposure? We didn't know. The, and what about the decline in lung function over time? And uh, to see if there is any specific cytokine uh, signatures between tobacco smoke and biomass, how are they different? So this is uh, where we are in Mysore. Out of the seven taluks, we randomly selected two taluks. I would like to uh, remember Professor Prabhakar, he was in ICMR, he was a Deputy Director General of ICMR, came to Mysore after he retired and he helped us uh, set up this you know, cohort with the design. And we, we had about 160 villages each of the taluk, we selected about 8 each. This is the flowchart, I won't go into the details, uh, uh, just that uh, we screened about 9,000 people to get about 8,500 people in the first phase of the study. I won't go into the details. We have a large amount of data. We followed the BOLD protocol and we have a tremendous data over the last 17 years. We have been following them up, wherein we did lung functions. We have done mental health. We have done vitamin D in a subsegment. We have done serum antioxidant reserves. We have done 40 serum cytokines and chemokines in a subsample of these. And uh, these are some of the key findings. One is to find out what is the minimum biomass exposure uh, that can cause respiratory disease. The biomass exposure index was originally coined by Professor Behra from PGI in about 1990 or 1991 in this paper in chest, which is like your smoking index that looks at the, if a woman cooks for four hours a day for 15 years, then her biomass index is 60. But is it clinically relevant? That is what we aim to find out. So you find that as the biomass index increases, definitely the log odds of having a respiratory disease, definitely there is a dose response curve and definitely there is an increase. So we observed that the biomass index of above 60, when it's adjusted for passive smoking, age, dusty occupation, had a significant risk of chronic respiratory disease when the biomass index is above 60. And then it gradually increased with the increased dose. But the highest sensitivity and specificity was with the biomass index of around 100. That's the minimum exposure needed 
to cause respiratory disease. Maybe 100 is when you have a very high risk of having disease. Interestingly, we found that people from uh, Nanjangud and Mysore, there was a big difference in these women in their sensitivity. For example, if you have biomass in exposure of above 60, 1 in 85 women would develop chronic bronchitis, whereas it was 1 in 28 women who developed chronic bronchitis in the Nanjangud Taluk. If you come to the biomass index of 110, 1 in 47 in Mysore would develop uh, chronic bronchitis, whereas it was 1 in 30. So we were wondering for a long time what was the difference. And uh, Nanjangud has a lot of industries. One of our PhD students currently went through all the villages in the Nanjangud and found that there is a very high, it's a very high mining area, magnesite, bauxite. And these uh, directly comes to these villages. The wind flow, they monitored all the wind flow and found that Definitely, the village in Nanjangud, which had the highest prevalence of chronic bronchitis and COPD, is just next to the mining area. For the last 40 years, they have been mining in that area. And that is probably the main reason. So out of these 4,000 women, we have now taken about close to 1,400 women exposed to biomass, urban women exposed to LPG. And we have been doing, again, a series of spirometry. We have done pheno uh, in this population. And we observed that in the biomass women using having COPD versus biomass women not having COPD, you will find possibly there is a difference in their ventilation status. Chimneys, windows, size of the windows are probably important. If you look at the PM 2.5, when they have COPD at 30 minutes, at 45 minutes, they have much higher PM2.5 concentration than the non-COPD. The same thing is true when you want to look at a 2-hour PM2.5 versus a 12-hour PM2.5 average, you still find houses with COPD have much larger PM2.5. We have also done with the IIT Madras, we have been looking at the composition of these and we find when you look at the elemental carbon and the organic carbon, we find the organic carbon is similar, but the elemental carbon has a big difference between houses where women have COPD versus where they don't. And this could be important as well. We have looked at the various metals, elemental composition of this PM2.5 and compared them between the houses with COPD and normal. Some of them show a dramatic difference between the uh, two groups. We have collected these biomass fuel particles. We also looked at the VOCs from this uh, biomass uh, fuel burning in houses with and without. This is COPD and this is uh, in houses without COPD. Uh, and we have done the uh, gas spectroscopy liquid uh, uh, you know, LCMS and we have found there is a significant uh, difference between the two houses. Now, we have done about 30 subjects so far, but our aim is to do about 250. Uh, whether biomass uh, affects the lung parenchyme, if so, by how much? We all know that uh, unlike tobacco smoking, biomass predominantly affects the medium size, small uh, and small airways. And tobacco smoking has significant impact on the uh, emphysema. But when we looked at uh, CT findings and put them into a software called Imbio, we find that biomass COPD also affects the lung parenchyma, I think, as much as tobacco smoking. We have subjects with uh, greater hyperlucency. These are the uh, various textures, hyperlucency, ground glass, reticular, honeycombing. This is the lung core in the central area, and this is the peripheral area. And the software tells us what proportion of these textures are available that are normal and that are diseased. And we found out of these 30 cases where we have done the uh, CT scan and uh, looked at the software, we have uh, subjects with greater hyperlucency, we have subjects with greater ground glass suggesting alveolitis, we have greater reticulate uh, pattern suggesting interstitial involvement, we also have even more with greater honeycombing in some of these patients. Once we finish, I think 250 patients, we will have our subjects we will have a lot more uh, clarity on this. Now, if you look at, we found two main phenotypes. We did pheno for all the 1,400 subjects. We found subjects with high pheno as well as normal pheno. 
how are they different from one another if you look at the total lung volume from the ct scan people with high pheno had greater total lung volume people with high pheno had greater hyperlucency and greater honeycomb whereas people with normal pheno but copd had greater uh, pulmonary vascular volume greater reticulation and greater ground glass so these two seem to be uh, distinct uh, phenotypes uh, copd with uh, normal pheno as well as, as high pheno if you look at uh, we have done lung function on two occasions 2009 was the first wherein we screened all the 1400 now when they come for ct scan in 250 of the sub group you have again repeated definitely there is a uh, over a period of four years the decline in lung functions is greater in copd subjects with normal pheno as compared to copd subjects with high pheno so when we also look at the phenotype are they stable are they going to shift over time over four years people with high pheno actually had higher pheno there was hardly any shift people with normal pheno where people with normal pheno this is uh, 2019 and 2023 so it's a fairly stable uh, phenotype that you see over uh, time now we need to find out who are the people who are at risk not everybody develop we have had women who are 100 years old cooking for 90 years and lung function is 120% predicted so not everyone develops disease we need to identify who is at risk this is one of our papers where we believe cc16 is a uh, very good biomarker we had about 200 subjects and cc16 was low both in tobacco smoking as well as biomass uh, copd and it correlates extremely well with 6 minute walk test with the gold grading with the dyspnea with the cat score quality of life and mortality indicators as well so this was where we looked at uh, 40 cytokines uh, looking at biomass copd as uh, well as tobacco copd and we found that ccl 27 is an important uh, cytokine uh, that was lower cxcl 13 is also lower again it is important for the immune regulation 15 of these found significant difference between biomass and as well as tobacco smoking copd we also did personal samplers wherein women had to wear it for about 48 hours we collaborated with the yale university for this and uh, mysore was one of the sites they did it in several other places as well and there's a lot of difference when women wear personal samplers if you find in india we have predominantly naphthalene and phthalates actually that come from plastic and these are from the different countries where they use biomass uh, fuel so biomass exposures from the womb to the tomb uh, it uh, has uh, systemic effects on almost all the organs in the body so it's important that we look at maintaining good indoor air quality i'll quickly go through as dr kilani has already spent a good amount of time on this natural ventilation in a country like india where uh, you know electricity is expensive to come by uh, natural ventilation is a good option hvac is good you have plants for indoor air purification and then you have the air purifiers as well so natural ventilation is important carbon dioxide if you keep the room closed all the time the windows and door closed all the time co2 and co build up will cause lot of sick building syndrome kind of symptoms so what about schools located near traffic uh, bearing highways when you open windows all the time there is a high uh, indoor concentration of these traffic generated air pollutants so what is called as manual airing strategy is crucial which means depending on the pollution you can just open the windows for 5 to 20 minutes per hour both door and windows and this reduces the indoor generated pollutants the vocs and radon but at the same time the indoor ultrafine particles which increases by longer window opening time is reduced when you keep it very short for even 5 minutes per hour if you can do that you will be able to reduce the indoor air pollutants now hvac is important so the filter we need something called as minimum efficiency reporting value and uh, minimum of mrv 13 is needed if it is 6 to 7 the black carbon is reduced by about 31 to 66% but if you go to 16 you can go up to 97% reduction so that is the kind of uh, filter that should be used when you talking of air pollution 
If you look at green screens for building, now this is a hydra helix, it's about 2.2 meters. It has reduced the indoor particulate matter by about 44% in traffic uh, dense area. So these are some of the uh, things that can be used. Uh, we have a whole lot of indoor plants that can absorb the VOC, such as formaldehyde, benzene, and trichloroethylene. They have varying uh, capacity for the removal efficiency. Maybe a combination of these plants could be ideal. So the types of air purifier has already been dealt with by Professor Kilani. It is important that these all have a good removal uh, in the sort of efficiency. Uh, but the most important one, you should not use an ozone and ionic charge because they themselves can cause a lot of diseases, especially the ionic charge is known to cause cardiac events. So when it is used, indoor air purifier, you can find that the PM2.5 is reduced, lung function is improved in an asthmatic, pheno is reduced, so it is good. But if you use an ionizer air purifier, before it was 12, it becomes almost 13,000. So though the PM2.5, uh, 10 are reduced, the increase in ions, negative ions, can cause a lot of autonomic dysfunction in cardiac, especially in susceptible people, and that can actually cause a lot of issues. So it is important that uh, those kind of only filter based must be used with an MERV more than 13, ideally 16. So these are all the uh, available option. You have the behavioral interventions, you have the clean fuel in school buses, school commute, maybe carpooling, use green infrastructure, Inside the classroom, you need to do ventilation, both windows as well as uh, uh, the door is important. Use high efficiency filters, air purifiers, indoor plants, all can be used uh, with a fairly decent removal efficiency for both the particulate matter as well as the gaseous uh, pollutants. So the air purifiers can effectively remove PM10 and 2.5 by up to 34 to 57%. HVAC is good. Clean fuel policy is good. Uh, green barriers can help uh, PM10, 2.5, NO2. And the combination are likely uh, to be the best. So whatever COPD diseases we are seeing now is due to the indoor air pollution for the last two or three decades. The current exposures will have their effect another two or three decades later. So it is very, very important that the Ujjwala scheme is good. Uh, we have been following, when we, visit, when we revisited these 4,000 uh, women, one-third of them had switched completely to LPG, one-third were still using completely uh, biomass fuels, and one-third uh, stacked use of both. Thank you very much. I'll finish within time, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mahesh, for an absolutely brilliant uh, overview of uh, indoor air pollution. You very rightly used the word indoor air pollution. When I introduced your top your topic, I introduced it as household air pollution. But then I completely realized that uh, I think household air pollution was the earlier term that was used because of the belief that it was the house that was the predominant source of indoor air pollution. But now we know that even schools and offices, uh, other indoor spaces are also uh, contributing significantly to, uh, to, to air pollution. So I think uh, that was the big learning for me. Thank you, Dr. Mahesh, for that. So Thank let's you. come to the panel discussion. And uh, I have a few questions that uh, I have already uh, jotted down for uh, for both these speakers. I think both of you all have given an absolutely amazing overview uh, with Dr. Mahesh actually showcasing all the original wonderful work that he has been doing in Mysuru on uh, household air pollution. I think that is absolutely top class research, Mahesh. You know, with all the cytokines and uh, the very large number of studies, uh, okay. large number of patients that you have included into your study. So these are landmark events in this in the story of uh, air indoor air pollution and health coming from India. So very very nice to hear all that, uh, Dr. Kildani, Coming coming to you with the first question, and uh, towards the end, you mentioned about uh, the uh, the introduction of the electric vehicles. Uh, in India and the silver lining that you talked about, uh, which uh, suggests that if the uh, 
the fuel driven vehicles are uh, they go down and the electrical driven, driven vehicles go up the ambient air pollution uh, levels will come down and that will have an impact on health uh, do you really see that happening i mean uh, do you believe that <clears throat> electric vehicles will uh, have a big impact on ambient air pollution levels and what about uh, the requirement for electricity to do the recharging of the vehicles somebody has to generate some pollution somewhere to uh, generate the electricity so uh, are there pros and cons for the use of electrical vehicles and uh, and ambient air pollution so um, everything has pro and cons in this uh, there is nothing which comes without a cost so for the electrical vehicle there are issues of disposal of used batteries and all which america is also facing but if you talk about air pollution you know uh, uh, whether it's 26% or 40% comes from the vehicle everything boils down to the emission now uh, who knows more than you that 100 years back california had a similar air pollution what india has now they they had traffic snarls and over a period of 70 to 100 years that their air, air pollution their number of vehicles have gone up 10 times their air pollution has gone down 10 times this is only because of the good engine quality and good uh, fuel quality so india has did start working on that the cng came then the especially in delhi the 15 years old the cars were put off the road but the implementation was a problem the audio did not work the fuel quality has improved but what has uh, actually uh, reverses the mushrooming of diesel vehicles which have actually they have become bigger vehicles very big vehicles people are fond of suvs in delhi now we don't see smaller vehicles as compared to other cities so i can talk more about delhi because of my experience but now uh, as as of now 12 to 13 percent of vehicles in Delhi have already become electric. Wow! <laughs> so that's, I think, that's I think that's that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yeah, At least that's, that's a good sign. About the, the, yeah. The, There's a big thing which is coming from government of India is uh, generating solar electricity, which is very very economical, and people are adopting to that. You don't need any infrastructure for that except the rooftop. So हम अगर हिंदी में बोले तो आवश्यकता आविष्कार की जर्नी होती व्हेन यू हैव अ कार यू फाइंड इफ यू विल कीप थिंकिंग अबाउट इट कह रहे बिजली का पॉइंट कहाँ से आएगा ये कहाँ से आएगा वो कहाँ से आएगा तो फिर प्रॉब्लम शुरू ही नहीं होगी व्हाट इज इम्पोर्टेंट एंड थ्रू इफ यू कैन एड्रेस कार मेकर इन द गवर्नमेंट Unfortunately, the only single point which is uh, uh, which is hindrance is electrical vehicles are more expensive than much more expensive than the usual vehicles, which is actually unfair because if you want to improve the air quality, another thing that what the United States did was that so many offices and government offices they made charging free, you know. They don't charge for that electricity, and uh, as I understand, running an electric vehicle of moderate size or small size in India also costs one to two rupees per kilometer. You know, that's that's really a very big saving. But somebody who wants to buy a car has to spend more money. So, government is already doing this. Uh, and another thing which uh, United Kingdom has done that uh, there is a zero duty. when you buy a electrical car electric car as compared to uh, the usual vehicle so lot of incentives are being given and as you have more uh, vehicles more charging points will come it's not a big deal you know uh, to have a charging point in your own house or parking lot and all those things there has to be a beginning so delhi has actually taken a lead in that also in and especially two wheelers and four wheelers both and now three wheelers also are becoming electrical i don't see any other solution because you know uh, the fuel you improve the fuel quality marginally you would improve their quality but if you make the all the cars imagine a situation that all the cars become electrical 
we will be cruising on as far as the city air pollution is concerned uh, another thing is that industry as far as delhi is concerned the court had to come in so what is our job our job is to do such kind of program at a different levels uh, and apprise the honorable court and the government unfortunately a lot of decisions come from the court of law these days very so you and me have to you know and people like us have to raise our voice and i think i am actually uh, my hands off to mahesh you know who is doing so much of yeah. ba- basic research it's not easy to do it and i am really very very impressed uh, yes so some kind of research should be done what dr pandey did and sorry i'll take only one minute uh, to talk about my mentor dr pandey that way back in nine, early 90s we actually erected a po- uh, big pole in the top rooftop of uh, all india institute and actually put up a motor and used to pass the air through a filter oh. and wait before and after to measure the pm10 you know and that that whole machine costed only something like 2000 or 1000 rupees so that was the innovation dr pandey had you know uh, he had that vision so more data has to be generated to impress upon people the impact air pollution and resource control is is the important thing thank you very well said dr kilani i think one of the key messages that you you put forward was the fact that the government is taking active steps to do something about it so whether it be ambient air pollution through reducing the taxes on electric vehicles uh, uh, you know replacing the diesel buses in delhi uh, with cng uh, re- minimizing the levels of uh, air pollution emitted by industries i think there's a lot of work that is happening but still of course we have a long way to go uh, in the space of indoor air pollution uh, the ujwala yojana scheme i think vahesh is uh, is a very important initiative and before i come to that the you know what is what is the real benefit of the ujwala yojana scheme what i mean what impact do you think it must have created in terms of numbers of people who are developing copd in terms of the suffering that is associated uh, copd so i'll come to that but before that you mentioned about the baromas index of more than 60 i think this is your original work very commendable and uh, uh, as i said very proud of what you have picked now could you simplify this in terms of how many hours per day is equal to a uh, biomass index of more than 60 so just like how we have uh, pack years for cigarette so if you smoke 20 cigarettes a day for one year it's one pack year uh, okay. how many how many hours of exposure to biomass fuel uh, is equal to maybe 10 pack years do you have those numbers equivalent to smoking i do not have but you can take it like a minimum tobacco smoking exposure is 10 pack years right minimum dose here to cause disease is, is about 60 so you yes. may take that as a fairly to be an equivalent okay. though we have not actually you know measured the damage maybe you know now there are 3d lung models they can actually test they have actually done it uh, for e cigarettes you know uh, kausa gangli from sweden has actually done it for e cigarettes they are also now doing for biomass so let us see how e cigarettes uh, correlates with biomass but uh, actual tobacco smoking and comparison with biomass in humans i don't think it has been done yet okay okay but what is what is 60 what is 60 actually mean how many hours per day like for example if a woman cooks for 3 hours a day for 20 years Uh-huh. that's a biomass index of 60 okay okay for okay. so four hours a day for 15 years that's a biomass index of 60 so that's the minimum dose and duration of exposure that is needed to cause respiratory disease very good very good i think these are very very new figures for me as well and when we take a good history from these patients i think we should start noting down the uh, biomass index uh, which uh, dr mahesh has very uh very very beautifully you know developed for india uh now coming to the ujwala yojana scheme do you do you genuinely believe that the ujwala yojana scheme has been a great success in especially in the rural population in terms of reducing the harmful effects that it has on women's health 
Correct. I mean, in the 4,000 women, like I said, after the Ujjwala scheme, uh, scheme pre-COVID, we had actually visited all the 4,000 women that were there in our Mudra cohort originally to see how many had shifted. Ujjwala scheme was already there for a couple of years. And we realized only one-third of them had shifted purely to LPG. And one-third of them were still purely with biomass, mainly because their husband pre prefers the slowly cooked food or the mother-in-law. Very true. Very true. There are, yeah, absolutely. There are behavioral issues here about. Yeah. Issues here which uh, cannot be controlled. And one-third were stacked. On, for some uh, cooking, they used gas. And for some cooking, they used biomass. Correct. Yeah. One third had shifted completely. But the impact of this on COPD will be in the next two decades. Okay. We'll not be able to see it now. We will Correct. still be able to see COPD because the you know minimum dose is like 15 to 20 years as we talked about the Myanmar's index. Correct. So the, but you know, in India, we see a lot of young girls uh, yeah, helping yeah. their mother in cooking. So they are exposed at a very young age. Absolutely. So 15 years for them is uh, when they become 20, 25 years old. Absolutely. There, I think you will find a lot of uh, benefit. And we still don't know, like for example, for, ci for uh, cigarette smoking, to have uh, no effect on mortality, the person has to stop smoking before the age of 30. Correct. Yeah. Beyond yeah. that, they still lose some a part of their life. This is from the Framingham study. We have yeah. no idea what it is uh, for the Bangma syntax. Okay. Okay. It I is, have a very interesting question for both of you. Yes. And uh, this relates to the uh, to the ventilation patterns inside the house and the impact it has on indoor air pollution levels. So what Mahesh is saying is, have good ventilation, let all the smoke that is being generated inside the kitchen go out, and therefore you will benefit from that. Uh, Dr. Kilnani, on the other hand, if you are living in a city like Delhi, where you open the windows, you are going to get all the horrible pollution that is coming from the motor vehicles and the industries and other sources. So good ventilation, how do you really define it in terms of an urban, in a rural population and in an urban population? So, Mahesh, you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, sure. See, in a rural village, like for example, where I am working, people are still uh, farming, people are using cycles. Rarely, you will not see any car or any bus. You have to travel three, four kilometers, walk to catch the bus. So, they are in a very pristine environment, I should say. So, there you open the windows, you have no issues. The problem, you say, comes in urban slums. Correct. In yeah. slums, there is a problem because they are in the heart of the city. You have extreme outdoor air pollution. And uh, when they open the windows, <laughs> they have a lot of problem. I think here, having plants, you know, we showed about the green, uh, and these ivy and indoor plants, you know, these are uh, possibly they can get it at low cost or if somebody can help them out or the government can help them out with these plants, maybe they can form that as a screen. And it is shown how that can reduce. So they can have open the windows, but just outside, they have the screen of these IV that can help reduce the outdoor pollutants from coming in. I mean, this is just a thought. <laughs> Somebody... Very, very good thought. Dr. Kilnani, your comments on opening the windows in Delhi city and uh, 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 ventilation inside the house. Yeah, I would like to share something, you know, personal experience, if you permit me. Uh, way back in 90s, 90s, after Soon after the Cargill war, uh, I went to Cargill uh, with a team of doctors and uh, had a health, sort of called health mela. Uh, the Cargill, yeah, of course, it was, a, it was a great height and, you know, very cold. By 10 o'clock in the night, that electricity goes off in the Cargill at that time. So, the people in uh, Cargill were solely dependent on heating their rooms with uh, non-electrical means that is burning of biomass fuel and to, to keep the room heated they would close of course the windows have to be closed and I realized that 100% people had COPD I realized in those two days we did PFTs we did a lot of tuberculosis and also so the question that you are asking I don't have a clear answer uh, first and foremost, it is not possible to close the window. Let me accept it in Delhi or even northern India. How can you close the window unless you have an air conditioning system? And it is well known that patients who have asthma or COPD, 
they are advised to be in air conditioned environment uh, and not the open window in the when the air quality or aqi is bad but if you talk about the general population it is not uh, not practic practicable it is important to, and majority of the middle class or lower middle class socio economically they don't have proper windows to close it also there would be some you know uh, some kind of opening there but having said that my thinking would be that when the aqi is hazardous and then i don't need to recite 300 or 240 or whatever that time it is better to close the window okay so, uh, yeah. i think that's an important answer we have just about 2 uh, to 3 minutes and i want very quick answers i have two three questions very interesting questions uh, dr khilani you talked about uh, these sources of ambient air pollution and we are generally led to believe that our neighboring places are the ones from where the sources of air pollution come but you showed that one image of the burning of uh, uh, you know of, uh, crop residues and mm-hmm. all the pollution from say for, for example from punjab haryana comes to delhi traveling several hundred kilometers so does air pollution really travel such long distances and for mahesh uh, indoor air pollution generated from the house when you have a chimney and you have does that air pollution travel long distances and have impacts on other areas dr dr kinnani first so one line answer is that it travels much more than what you are talking about that's what my thinking is of course the now if i could talk about you know uh, science the ultra fine particulate matter does not travel beyond 300 meters that is the evidence you know so why i'm telling you that you know people who have houses close to the trains or you know close to the road side close to the flyovers they would be affected the policemen will be affected with ultra fine particulate matter but if ultra fine for not the particulate but if the person is living 300 meters beyond that for that person that ultra fine particulate hazard is is not there so uh, as far as the traversing of pollution is concerned it is not only from delhi to you know, haryana to delhi that's the political question you know punjab to delhi it goes much beyond that of course the distance matters so the proximity the effect is much more it would go much beyond 200 km all depends upon the wind wind quality and you know climate and all those things okay thank you dr kinnani mahesh i think the uh, when, when when the chimney is used and you have cluster of houses all on all cooking at the same time we have found that the outdoor air pollution also increases it's not as much as the indoor but uh, definitely there is a doubling or even quadrupling in some uh, situations we have done the measurements when women are cooking both indoors as well as outdoors and it can reach uh, increased concentration as well okay okay the last question so so uh, i just want to add that it, it's yes, a well known fact that you cannot segregate indoor from outdoor air pollution because indoor air pollution always contributes to outdoor pollution also and why she was found correct absolutely right absolutely right uh, last question both for both of you all you are seeing a patient in a clinic and the patient uh, is living next to a busy road uh, he's got a shop over there and so he's got no other choice but to get exposed to the uh, pollution that is emitted from so many sources uh, the question that the patient asks you is doctor is there any magic tablet that will help me protect from the harmful effects of air pollutants do you have an answer for that mesh you first and then dr kinnan <laughs> we have so we have looked at uh, some of the not a tablet for example but there are studies in south africa wherein they have used uh, certain plants that includes the moringa and that has shown increased urinary excretion of the pollutants so there are factors in the diet and we have been looking at some factors because i said women 100 years old 120% lung function very fit and active they eat a handful of moringa leaves every day raw i so said what do you do you know that's so some of the uh, messages we have got from women we are actually studying them in more detail the 3d lung models let us see what we get but there are nutritious substances naturally available that can increase excretion of the absorbed pollutants what about the role of antioxidants with your fruits and vegetables and so on? i mean they are good but i don't think they are 
completely effective in mitigating the aspect uh, or the you know a lot of health effects of these pollutants they are simply not potent enough okay dr kilmani your last word so i <laughs> i would put it what uh, mahesh is saying that 100 years old you know <clears throat> we get people when we ask them to quit smoking they will say okay, see my uncle smoked till age of 96 he never had any cough you know so that is well known there are genetic factors uh, of course the fruits and everything is good for general health but it doesn't protect you from copd and i don't know any tablet i am actually a physician who is very much against polypharmacy i never say ye vitamin lo to bachoge even covid time i never gave vitamin c to my patient because And ultimately, everything came out to be farce. You know. Same, I would think true of what Dr. Bhaiyesh is saying about some plants that has, when unless there is a scientific basis, we should not propagate it because it create a false sense of security, which we should not instill instead of you know preventing emission or pollution or. I would agree with that. Exposure. But there are hidden secrets that Bhaiyesh has at least has observed in his uh, research. Which which merits further research? I think no, no, I am not. I am not saying anything against what Mahesh is saying. I am giving my view on antioxidants. I am giving on view of my ignorance about knowing any tablet which can reduce the harmful effects. Okay, Actually, I okay. don't know that. Okay, I think on that note we would come come to the end of this uh, wonderful symposium on air Thank pollution so and health. We have listened to some of the best talks you could hear on ambient air pollution. and its impact on health as well as indoor air pollution and its impact on health two brilliant talks and uh, the panel discussion was also very lively and exciting with very very interesting answers so with this uh, i would then conclude with today's uh, wonderful indian chess society webinar on air pollution and health do continue to join us on a regular basis as and when the indian chess society has these webinars uh, we 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 try our best to organize topics that are uh, very important and relevant from a clinical practice point of view and we also ensure that we get some of the best speakers that we have in this field so uh, with that i would like to say thank you and uh, like to invite this uh, datta to do the vote of thanks and then we can say thank you very much and good night uh, ms datta are you there Okay. If not, let let me take the pleasure of saying thank you, thank you, Professor thank Kilnani. Thank, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for thank your you wonderful contribution to this. Thank uh, you so much, Dr. Kilnani, for uh, being here and holding the program together like this. Thank you so much for taking out time from your busy schedule. I would also like to thank our faculties, Dr. Kilnani and Dr. Mahesh, for being here with us in this ICS endeavor, and we really hope to meet you soon. for another webinar in parting more knowledge to all our audience and viewers thank you so much thank you. as for our yeah. audience i would like to thank you for joining us you can uh, contact us at ics office executive at the gmail.com please join in large numbers and interact with our faculties post questions for them ask them interact with them and uh, before closing this webinar i would like to tell you all once again remind you that napcon delhi registrations of 2023 are now live so please get yourself registered as soon as possible can we please have the napcon video display
Thank you so okay. much for displaying that. So as you all saw, 5th to 8th October, please register yourselves now and uh, we will see you in NAPCON. Thank you so much yet again for joining us and we will see you in the next ICS webinar. Thank you.